watching the world burn, watching the world burn. September 14th, 2024. Let's get into it. Always want to start my videos with something or a few things to help you out. I'm going to put the link up above drhoffmanstore.com. drhoffmanstore.com. This is a guy that I trust to get my supplements from. Okay, there's a lot of studies out. All these over the counter supplements usually come with bad ingredients. Some of them are actually toxic, some of them can hurt your liver. Okay, uh, I also uh, just bought some supplements from another site. So I'm telling you, do your homework. Okay, get out there and do your own research and try to figure out. Just don't go to Sam's Club or Walmart and buy the, uh, the over the counter unless you know something about them. And if you do, leave a comment. I'm always willing to change my mind. This is, a, this is a recent post that I put up on X. So I asked Grok, uh, that's the, uh, e, the X uh, uh, AI. I said, generate me an image of God. <laughs> I was just, just having fun. Well, you're seeing the image now that it generated. And so what did I post with that image? I said, uh, you know, now, don't trust anything around you except God was pretty much the gist. In other words, you're being fed misinformation everywhere you turn. And uh, I wanted to start the video today with, you know, your government is banning Russian television. Now, why is that? They're saying, oh, it's, it's propaganda. Well, let me, let me explain something to you about free speech. Okay, you're going to get bad information. You're going to get good information. Okay, sometimes that bad information sways you with a bunch of scams. Now, the, now the, the things that should be getting banned are all the scams that are out there. You know, how many times does that phone ring a day where somebody's trying to sell you some swamp land in Florida? And some people seem to fall for that. I don't understand it, but it happens. Okay, and I've certainly, I was Charles J. Givens. I fell for that. But I'm, what I'm telling you is you got to disseminate through all of the misinformation and try to get inform an opinion on the good information. So anytime uh, a, an entity such as the U.S. government keeps you from getting information from Al Jazeera, uh, Russian television, uh, India, you know, they have their news channels. There's a lot of places to go for information. So don't ever trust censorship being done by the Ministry of Truth called the federal government. You have to stand for your First Amendment rights. And the Democrats, the warmongering Democrats, will take away your First Amendment. They're trying to take away free speech, and that's what I've been trying to tell you, all right, with my videos. Why are they doing this now? Closing down? Banning? Well, it's clear. They have elections and want to distract from something. But most importantly, ahead of those same elections, they don't want such a large number of people to know the truth. They need to silence everyone. This is the story of freedom and democracy in the so-called free West. It seems to me that only clinically insane people or those who are obviously biased can believe in it. It's very easy to promote freedom of speech and practice it when it's only your speech that counts and no one else's. What's even more amusing is that they accused our organizations of collaborating with intelligence services, which implies we're some kind of intelligence unit ourselves. That's absolute nonsense. We're not any part of the intelligence services. Perhaps we would like to be. Maybe we could hide better if that were the case. But we've learned differently. We're journalists and we continue to do our journalistic work. The idea that you can't achieve results without being part of the intelligence service has exposed them for what they are. It's a classic case of projection, as people say. The guilty party always has the red face. Their media, their foundations, the New York Times, and all the others publish leaks daily. What are these leaks? They receive orders from intelligence services. Write this, write that. They have long since merged with each other. If you look at who runs these foundations and often the media, they're either families of intelligence employees, former intelligence officers, or future ones. They flow from one organization to another. I have nothing against intelligence services, but it's simply not the case for us. 
They operate one way, we operate another. We are journalists. Of course, we are struck by their approaches regarding our fundraising for the front. We have raised substantial amounts for the front. During the special military operation, we collected hundreds of millions of rebels. We send drones to the front, everything that the units request, so our guys can defend themselves and fight better and feel safer on the battlefield. If you can help in any way, then you help in any way. We have done that, and we will continue to do so. Well, amidst the fresh sanctions handed down against RT, our frequent guest Dan Kavalik was detained by US authorities for several hours. Another guest, Christopher Halali, was scheduled for our program today but declined to come, citing the potential risks. He sent us his comments instead. What is happening now in the United States is a blatantly unconstitutional attack on freedom of speech and freedom of the press. These are both enshrined in Article 1 of the US Constitution. However, these freedoms are quickly being eroded by a Justice Department hellbent on combating disinformation and Russian propaganda. These are mere euphemisms for any line of thinking that runs counter to the mainstream narrative of the US government. This situation has had a profound chilling effect on many commentators, researchers and activists who would speak about the news and current events on RT. This shows us that the US government is more concerned about self-preservation and maintaining its power and control than on the liberties of ordinary Americans. So we'll get into the, the next topic because I just try to help you in any way I can. We're going to talk about tire pressure for just a minute. <laughs> you go, you're talking about free speech, now you're going to talk about tire pressure? Yeah, I'm going to talk about tire pressure. So my uh, tire pressure light went off. Okay, and it seems to go off at the most inconvenient times. And uh, so the, the first thing, all the motorheads out there, they're going like, man, this guy is dumb as a rock. <laughs> yes, I am sometimes. So the first thing, I couldn't get to the valve stem to pump up the tires because the hubcap was in the way. So I stuck a big screwdriver down in there and I was twisting that screwdriver and I noticed it was, it was harming the plastic, trying to pop that plastic hubcap off. So I called up the dealer. I said, man, is there some sort of special tool that I need to get these hubcaps off? And they're like, no, no, we just take a screwdriver down in there and just, you know, work your way around the hubcap and eventually you can just pop it right off. So I thought about that and I said, you know what? What I was doing wrong. Let's just get into this. I was sticking the screwdriver in there like a paint can and twisting it. Well, that little edge on the screwdriver will damage the plastic. So what you do is you go down in there far enough and then you just pull that screwdriver away and you'll pop that, that hub cap off just a little bit. And then you work your way around. The other thing was I went to the owner's manual because I was trying to figure out the optimal pressure for the tires. And you know I don't understand why they don't put anything in the owner's manual about the tire pressure. They'll tell you all about checking the tread and what to look for and blah, blah, blah. I said, damn, man. And then I remembered, I said, well, you know what? The tire pressure is on the inside of the driver's door panel. So if you look down, you'll find the optimal tire pressure. For my car, it was 35 pounds in the rear tires and 36 pounds in the front tires. So then I started working my way around. I said, well, how low did I let these tires get that the, the light went off? Do you know that every one of my tires was at, was at about 28 pounds? Oh my God, it, see what happens when you have too little tire pressure, you're going to wear that tire uh, on, the, uh, on the outside and the inside tread is not going to wear enough. So you're wearing the tire in a bad fashion, shortening the life of that tire. So I just wanted to get something simple out of the way. So uh, we watched the, well, if I, let's put up that video, uh, the next video, because I wanted to talk a little bit about election integrity and I found this video on what happened in Mariopa County. Formed examinations in over 2,000 cases in five continents. His expert testimonials have been featured in the Wall Street Journal, America's Most Wanted, Forensic Files, and Good Morning America, to name a few. I'm Eric Spikeen. I'm a forensic chemist and a forensic document analyst. That means I deal with all aspects of question documents, when they were made, if they've been altered, changed, or added to, and how long ink has been on paper. I was asked if I had experience in election matters to look at primarily printing processes, machine copied marks, uh, CPS code, which is a counterfeit protection system, 
and I said that I did, and I traveled to Arizona with three other people from my office. There could be 10 Two primary findings uh, that I had. Number one is that there were a series of ballots uh, that I examined the photographs of, and Minion, as the election subcontractor, produced ballots for each of the zones or districts that were involved, at least in the area that I looked at here in Maricopa County. Um, and there were 5,000 approximately, a little over, different ballots. As you know, in a state, there could be two different senator races. There could be 10 different house races. And all the permutations and combinations is what gives you the 5,000. So they create a final ballot for each one of these districts or zones or regions. So that when you go in and you give your name, and it knows you're from this area, you would get this ballot to vote on all the issues that pertain to you and only the issues that pertain to you. And I found that there were about 25,000 ballots that were not printed from the official Dominion PDF ballot. In other words, the printing process, appearance, uh, is completely different than what you would get from a first generation PDF printing. As you can imagine, the lines are perfect. So they're perfectly straight, no breaks in them, the circles or ovals as they may be, and they're a solid line. When I examined some of the early voting ballots and election day ballots from various polling locations, there were about 25,000 that did not have printing from this perfect PDF, as you would expect, but instead had breaks in all the same places around an oval. So you can look at one of the ovals and there are imperfections in the line and they're in the same place on every single one of these ballots. These 25,000 unidentifiable ballots alone represent over double the amount of Joe Biden's 10,457 vote margin. Another finding here was that we had 20, approximately 25,000 ballots that were not created from the PDF that is used for the election process. So in other words, <clears throat> the election provider comes up with ballots and it's specific to a geographical area because the person that lives in this neighborhood might not be voting for the same people that live in that neighborhood or, or another neighborhood. So here in Maricopa County, from memory, you had 5,012 or something like that, just over 5,000 different permutations and combinations to the ballots. Then that's multiplied by two because there's a Spanish version that's available for each one of these ballots. But it's the same ballot with the same people, just in a different language. So we've got five, we'll just say 5,000 different ballots for now uh, that are created ahead of time. And those are created in PDF. Now, the big reason why is that you have a third party send out mail-in ballots. So those have to be created in advance. And second, for your early voting, you have vote on demand. So in other words, even if I live way out in the corner of the county, but I work downtown, I could go to something downtown that could print my ballot from my area and I could vote here. It's convenient. A lot of people do that. So these PDFs are created in advance. They're obviously good quality PDFs. And when they're printed, they should look roughly or exactly the same. In this group of ballots, I find that the quality is severely degraded from what a PDF would be as if printed on demand or if printed by your uh, third-party provider who prints these all the time. And you know, you're being disenfranchised. And in my last video, I told you that you've got to get out and defend the vote. You know, these NGOs that are going to be manning the polling stations, we have to stand against them and whatever. If, if nothing else, just to just this election, go to a damn polling station, stand around just for an hour, maybe two of your life, give up an hour or two and try to Try to make sure that things are going fair. Of course, you know, I'm hoping you're voting in advance ahead of time. But even then, you know, if the ballot, that's another thing. If you do vote in advance, which I'll vote the first day I get my ballot, because I already know exactly how I'm going to vote on everything. All right. Then what you can do is you can go online and make sure that your vote uh, is counted. Because most uh, counties in the, in the country, maybe not in the Democrat states, I don't know. But here in Florida, I can always check online to make sure my ballot got counted properly. So that's uh, that's another way. I mean, what did it take five minutes of your time? There's also, and I, I encouraged you in the last video, 
I went ahead and registered. So I'm now, it's uh, republic.us slash uh, our country, our choice, or OCOC. -OC. Republic.us slash OC slow C. You can join for $120 a year. And man, they did one hell of a bang up job with that uh, social media tool. I mean, they, and it's all geared toward, I mean, you can find your representatives. You can, you can, you can contact them. I mean, through, through this website, uh, you can post articles. I've already posted two, uh, you know, it's great. You know, one of the, one of the things I pointed out was uh, in my last post was, you know, that Ukraine was a CIA operation uh, from the get go. And, uh, you know, really, they, they, they've been over in Ukraine for many, many, many years, but they didn't actually overthrow the government until 2014. All right. So we're going to do a long reading today on everything you need to know about Ukraine, because I'm like you, I get educated every day on things that I didn't know. I mean, who the hell even knew about Ukraine? Well, we know that uh, Joe Biden was laundering a lot of money through there. You know, we didn't know that the entirety of the federal government <laughs> and the military industrial complex and everybody was getting rich off Ukraine, including a lot of a lot of people in Ukraine have been grifting. That's why the, the soldiers aren't getting any money because <laughs> by the time it gets to the soldiers, everybody's taking their cut, you know, because we haven't been auditing where that if you want to call it money, I call it currency, because it ain't going to be worth much here soon. You know, we're, we're spending $1 trillion over what we take in in taxes every three months. Folks, that's just unsustainable. Speaking of that, I know I'm all over the place. Gold hit $2,600 an ounce. And silver, it banged up against 31 I think it rests right now between 30 and 31 <clears throat> Now you're saying, man, is this a good time to sell silver? Well, yes and no. All right, in the past, it hit 31, 32. I probably should have shaved off some of my silver, okay? Because then it dropped back down to 27, and then what I would have done was buy it back. Kind of like Johnny Bravo. It's like a swing trade. You sell high, buy low. But the thing is, how do you know when it's not making that, that, that shot to the moon, right? Am I being greedy? No, all the fundamentals are there. You got a government spending that's out of control. You got corruption everywhere in the United States. You got grifting beyond belief by the corporations, by the by the uh, the big funds. You know the stock market's hitting all-time highs because people don't know where to put their money. All right, so everything's going to come crashing down. So when it dies, silver's going to take off to the moon. So I'm holding on to my silver. This isn't financial advice. I'm just telling you what I'm doing because I don't think that uh, silver is going to, you know, go go down much further than, well, you might see 27 again. I doubt it. I think it's going to stay about 31 or it might probably hit 35 here soon. So anyway, you might want to shave off just a little I bit. Agree. Yeah, there's a guy walking with me. He agrees with me. So buy silver, buy silver. All right. So we've hit on the uh, free speech. We've hit on, uh, you know, the RT video. You've seen the election video so we got to get we got to true the vote people we have to true the vote otherwise we don't have a country left to live in and the main people cheating are the democrats they're going to cheat 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 on this election and you got to stop them man you got to stop them how y'all doing like i said you got to get your information from everywhere that you can i wanted to go back on a lot of things that i've gotten wrong but i changed my perspective on and see, that's where a lot of people, they won't admit when they were wrong about something. So the, the first thing was, I remember, and I think I've talked about this in the past, was when that virus was coming over and people were dying like flies in Italy. I was warning everybody and nobody wanted to hear anything about it. And then when it hit, that lying bastard Fauci was telling everybody to wear a mask, distance six, six feet, and then... Uh, Trump came out with Operation Warp Speed, one of the biggest mistakes he ever made. Uh, I was listening to the pharmaceutical companies and that idiot Fauci, which I hope he's going to put in jail if he does get elected. But anyway, and then uh, and he was telling everybody to, to get the experimental vaccine. And uh, like I said, we're seeing a lot of negative uh, press about that now. Not saying true or false. 
You get the booster to your 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 booster, especially if you're a Democrat. Please, God, go get boosted up with as many shots as you can get and put a condom over your head, please, please, if you're a Democrat. All right, so that's the that's the first thing. So I mean, think about that. I was completely wrong. I, I wasn't against wearing a mask. I knew that an N95 would probably help in some fashion. I wasn't for it. I really hadn't done. Like, yeah, I didn't know anything about masks. And you know, when you look back at the uh, pandemic, what was it, 1928? Whenever that was, I don't know, the uh, the first pandemic. And, uh, you know, everybody had masks on back then. So you figure, well, maybe there is some benefit to that. And then you, the scientists were coming out and they were saying, no, you know, these are the, the particles, the vir vertical particles are so small that they just blow right through that cloth. And of course they go out the sides of the of a cloth mess. So they were saying, you know, it's really not gonna do, you know, in their opinion. Now I'm not saying, you know, but, but I, I, I tend to, you know, whatever, you do you. Maybe there's some benefit, I don't know, all right? Don't wanna get another strike on YouTube for giving you medical advice. You do you, man, you do you. But I'm just saying, I changed my opinion on that. That's just me, all right? Then I, when you, when Russia first invaded Ukraine, I thought, man, I didn't think they would go in there. And everybody, all the propaganda people were putting Ukrainian flags in their windows. And, uh, you know, I wasn't, I was on the fence. I was thinking, man, that's a pretty bold move by Putin. You know, he's a real son of a gun to go in there and invade a country like that. You know, but then I said, well, why would he do something like that? You know, and so I... I, at first, I was I was kind of uh, saying, you know, boy, Russia is bad, Ukraine good. That was my uh, that was my hypothesis. Then I started learning more and more and more, and I changed my opinion. And then I said, Ukraine bad, <laughs> Russia good. You know, so uh, yeah, okay. It was oh, you said the Putin lover. You're a Putin lover. I don't love Putin. I just think that we would have done the same thing if, if Mexico was being loaded up by Russia with uh, armed to the teeth and, and trained their armies. I don't think the United States would take kindly to that. All right. We were bringing NATO right up to Russia's border. You know the history. We're going to do a long reading on it today. Uh, so I changed my opinion there. So then when Hamas came across, attacked Israel, I thought, man, Hamas bad. Israel good. And, uh, you know, things progressed from there. Then, uh, you know, Israel started to genocide the Palestinians. And I watched it. And at first it was 10,000 and 20,000 and then 40,000 dead Palestinians. And then the pictures started coming out. And I was looking at all of this horror. And I thought, my God, the Israelis have gone batshit crazy. And then, they, then it was... 100,000 dead Palestinians, and then 200,000 dead Palestinians, and then 300,000 dead Palestinians. We're going to be upwards of a million dead Palestinians soon. The genocide, and then the Democrats, the warmongering Democrats were sending, then I knew we were on the wrong side of history, and I knew Israel was definitely on the wrong side of history. I thought the world had said we will never tolerate another genocide in the history of the world. Well, you know, I, I guess the Christians in the United States, they're not going to stop until all two million Palestinians are dead. And then I guess the world will look back and say, well, oh well, you know, and you say, well, geez, that cybersecurity guy, won't you hop on a plane and go over? I can't, man, I broke my damn neck. I wouldn't survive 10 minutes without the medical uh, things that I have at my house, all right? If I hadn't broke my neck, yeah, okay. I would consider going to Russia because I just want to see it for myself. You know, do I believe everything that I see? Uh, uh, you know, all the pictures of how beautiful Moscow is and how clean their subways are. No, I'm trusting in what I watch on TV and watch what I hear about by the independent content creators. But I don't know firsthand. I would like to see it firsthand, but I can't. You know, same with uh, Israel. You know, would I want to visit it right now? No. But if I'm going to put my money where my mouth is, I would definitely, you know, because I heard here recently they just killed a bunch of UN volunteers. I mean, my God, what's a, when's the UN going to quit sending people into Gaza? Because you know the Israelis are going to kill them. The hell, they just shot that woman. She was an American citizen, 
and I think she was uh, also had Turkish citizenship. And so people in Turkey are protesting now because the Israelis just shot her right in the head, man. Blew her head off. And no consequence. Guy didn't go to jail, nothing. I mean, my God, how many more scenes? And then, of course, then the, the stories came out that there were no babies in ovens. That was all Israeli propaganda. So you see what I'm just telling you. Get your information from everywhere you can and form your own damn opinion about things and quit sticking your head in the sand and not paying attention to what's going on around you. Got another turtle on the video. Let's check him out. Little guy, isn't he? It's a little different turtle than those big ones. Look at him. Remember when you were a kid and we used to grab these <laughs> and try to make pets out of them? That's so wrong. If your kid has a pet turtle, put them back in the wild. You know, unless you buy them at a pet shop, I guess. Let's get the front of them. There he is. All right. Okay, we're done scaring the turtle. There's the dog in all his glory, sniffing everything. Oh, well, just wanted to get that on the video. All right, it's going to be a, a long reading. And uh, if you want to cut the video off, but I wanted to give you uh, some background on Ukraine. Uh, things I didn't even know. Because uh, this was a post by clandestine, but before I get into the reading, I've got a link uh, right above, and uh, it's about the uh, the Battle of Kirsch in uh, 1943. Uh, and, and, and I think that this will answer the question for you about why the Russians are so paranoid about uh, having a hostile army on their border. It, just like we would be paranoid if, if Russia was arming uh, Mexico to uh, invade the United States, or so we might perceive it. Okay, just like going back to the Cuban Missile Crisis. We didn't want those missiles in Cuba. We, we almost destroyed the world just to keep that from happening. So anyway, this will, this will give you all the background, but before you uh, watch the rest here, watch that video on the Kirsch. I mean, the Russians lost, in that battle alone, it was one million Russians died. And I think it was the biggest tank battle in the history of the world. And uh, so, you know, think about it. If we lost in, in one battle, that was just one battle. Okay, remember they lost 20, I think it was like 25 to 28 million Russians died in that war. World War Three, World War Two, excuse me. And uh, so you understand why the Russians said, or, or Bill Burns, okay, now he's the CIA director now. And uh, he put out a memo back when he was the ambassador to Russia. And uh, he basically told, I think it was the Obama administration, might have been. And he said, uh, yet means yet in other words ukraine has to remain neutral or we will uh you know attack all right and bill burns knows that but then i just watched if you watch judge napolitano bill burns came out and now he's towing the democrat line saying oh this is a war of russian aggression you know they had no justification for invading ukraine everybody oh you're a putin lover that cyber security guy you're a putin lover all right well let's just read this whole thing and, uh, and I want you, you form your own opinion, right? Get your news from anywhere you can. You form your own opinion. So this was written, this is an excellent uh, article written by clandestine. It's a long read, I'm going to warn you. So let's just get into it. Ukraine is essentially a giant CIA base posing as a sovereign nation. The CIA moved into Ukraine after the fall of the Soviet Union, looking to take advantage of the lawless and destabilized country using it as an offshore proxy outside the scope of U.S. oversight. It began with the Numb Luger Act in 1991. I thought we didn't really go into Ukraine until 2014. So you see, I'm, I'm educating myself just like I'm educating you. You know, I, I swear I was thinking, I, I didn't know we were uh, working in Ukraine all the way that, that this many years. I mean, think about it. I, I think in, from, in the 1990s, I, I didn't even know Ukraine was... <laughs> was I, I couldn't have told you where it was on the map, man. All right, so let's just keep going. Then, uh, and then carried on into, into 2005, when then Senators Obama and Luger, Lugar visited Ukraine to inspect the former Soviet biochemical and nuclear facilities pictured above and then added Ukraine to the Defense Threat Reduction Agency and began turning these far, former Soviet facilities into defense research facilities, which opened the door to U.S. contractors to establish their foothold in Ukraine and set up their money laundering and racketeering operations under the guise of foreign aid. 
Did you know Obama went to Ukraine? <laughs> yeah, I guess I wasn't really that much of a geopolitical uh, fool back then, you know. I didn't know Obama went to Ukraine. And I don't who the hell is Luger or Lugar? Uh, I guess, you know, maybe that was a senator back then. I don't know. I, I haven't ever heard of him. So, see, I'm educating myself just by reading this. All right, so um, Putin recognized this. He knew that the U.S. had destabilized and taken control of Ukraine and recognized that the U.S. were building a proxy armor on it, army on his border by funding, training, and supplying Ukraine with weapons and trying to bring them into NATO. This was a red line for Putin, as he said, as he has said for decades. Russia has been invaded from the West too many times before. Watch the video on Kursk. Huge. I mean, it, it, it's not only is it educational. They, they, I don't know. These YouTube creators are amazing people. I mean, amazing. Whoever put together the video, uh, I mean, it's professionally done. Uh, in, in, plus, you know, the Kursk battle right now, the Russians are slaughtering uh, the remaining Ukrainians that are in Kursk right now. And so you, you can understand why. And they know, that's another thing, you know, Russians know Kursk very well. And when you watch that video on the Kursk battle, you'll understand. Um, let's see. Russia has been invaded from the West too many times before and will not tolerate a hostile standing army and long-range missiles on their border. Just like the United States uh, didn't, didn't like it when Russia tried to put nukes in Cuba in the 60s. Russia doesn't like the U.S. trying to bring armies and weapons to Ukraine. I mean, just think about it. If we started arming Mexico, or if Russia was arming Mexico to the teeth, giving them long-range weapons to strike inside the United States, you think we would put up with that? You know, or maybe if Russia would just uh, get rid of Trudeau <laughs> and arm Canada, that'd be a better better option for me. I, I mean, good Lord, if we could just get rid of that little turd Trudeau up in, up in uh Canada, I can't believe what the Canadian people will put up with. Of course, I can't believe what the Americans put up with. You know, all right, so let's keep going here. Essentially, Ukraine is an unofficial U.S. territory and NATO member, and the deep state do not want to lose out on their cash cow and strategic asset that is Ukraine. Hence, why they continue to send hundreds of billions of our tax dollars to protect Ukraine's border. They are using Ukraine as a laundromat to funnel in hundreds of billions for the war machine and also covering up their extreme criminality in Ukraine, including crimes against humanity for bioweapon development, human trafficking, drug trafficking, all the things they can't get away with stateside they do in Ukraine. Well, here I, I disagree, because they are getting away with the stateside. We've got the largest human traffic and child trafficking operation in the, in the world taking place in the United States. Hundreds, a hundred, over 100,000 kids have disappeared. And supposedly they're in these uh, pedophile uh, houses and all across the United States where people are abusing them so badly that many of them are dying. And, and we're turning a blind eye to this, just like we're turning a blind eye to the, the, the genocide of the Palestinians. I mean, the, the world, I mean, the Democrats are the most evil people on the planet. I mean, I can't believe that they would put up with uh, human trafficking and a lot of women are getting raped. Oh, they worry about abortion. You know, I, once again, the abortion bill is available in every state in the United States. A woman can abort her child anytime she wants. And yet, you'll see on the advertisements, Trump's going to take abortion away from women. Oh, my gosh. You know, I, I obviously, I'm against abortion. Okay? I, certainly, if a woman's been raped or uh, it's incest or, uh, or it's going to harm the life of the mother, you've got to allow abortion in those cases. All right? But I mean, I, I, I agree with Glenn Beck, at least, you know, offer them a choice with the ultrasound so they can see what's in their womb before you, you cut it out, right? Or suck it out. I think it's that, that's how it works. Anyway, God, I don't want to think about that. Kind of sick, isn't it? Uh, uh. Uh, let's see. So we were talking about the human tra drug trafficking. Think about that. Fentanyl. Fentanyl is killing over 100,000 Americans a year. So we're the largest drug trafficking nation in the world. And by the way, when I say we, I mean the, 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 the Biden administration, Mayorkas is handling all of this. He's doing all this on his own. You know, so the federal government, your federal government is paying for all of this with your tax money in the billions of dollars, in the billions. So here comes a guy. There's supposed to be no motor vehicles in this park. And you know, where are the rangers to take care of this? Let's let him go by.
two of them actually. All right, so let's keep going. If the public knew the truth about the origins of U.S. involvement in Ukraine, they would never have supported sending a single penny to Ukraine. I disagree. I, once again, the Democrats know, and they would support it. Why? Because they're getting all the money. Do you know how much money the, the Democrat Party uh, laundered through Ukraine in the last election to fund all of their candidates? Where do you think all that money came from? So yes, the Democrats are for the, the Ukraine laundromat. And they're for sending U.S. taxpayer dollars because they're getting it all back. It's a laundromat. The narrative that uh, Russia attacked Ukraine in 2022 unprovoked is war propaganda to make it appear Ukraine are the righteous defenders in order to garner your support. When in reality, the United States started this conflict, they are the ones who brought the war to Putin's doorstep, and the U.S. are the ones perpetrating the war by continuing to fund and supply Ukraine. Putin does not want to conquer all of Europe, and he can't conquer all of Europe. He doesn't have, it would take a, a, a gazillion man army to, to go into Europe, and plus, you know, think about when the Nazis were in France. All of the, uh, the, um, the uh, uh, you know, the, we want to call them terrorists. The Germans looked at them as terrorists because of all the underground uh, things that were taking place. Uh, you know, you can't just occupy a, a nation hostily. Uh, and, you know, I mean, you can, if you're, if you're Israel, you just exterminate them. <laughs> you know what I mean, that's, that, but that's one way to be able to occupy a nation. Just kill everybody there and then just take over the land. Uh, but Putin does not want to conquer all of Europe. He just wants NATO off his border and, and justice for the... And, yeah, justice for the U.S. Uh, deployment of weapons of mass destruction in Ukraine, namely gene-specific biological weapons. The Cold War never truly ended. Now, think about those biological weapons. They were, Fauci was trying to develop a Slavic uh, Russian a biological weapon that would be uh, uh, coded to their genetic code. Okay, and then, of course, we'd have an antidote because no biological weapon, you, you know for sure how it's going to work. You know, just like uh, um, he developed COVID in, in the Wuhan lab in China. You know, that spread all over the world, killed millions of people. That little uh, turd, Fauci, still not in jail, blows my mind. Like, like Stalin said, kill a million people, a statistic. Kill one person, you go to jail. All right, so uh, um, anyway, but or you could have just developed a biological weapon and had an antidote released it into Russia and said, hey, Russia, we got the end. You know, I'm on my way back to the car. I just listened to talk radio and watchdog on Wall Street's on right now. And, you know, so many people, he said there's two ways to get people to invest in something stupid. Greed and fear. <laughs> and I got to thinking about that. I mean, you know, think about how fear is used to exploit people online and phishing attacks and you know all the other cyber threats that we face and not only that to rob people you know get people to invest in mutual funds with a five percent front end load because they think they're going to make a gazillion dollars and you know i just uh and then greed how many times have you heard you know you're getting in on the ground floor of the greatest ai investment in the history of the world Right now, it's selling for pennies on the dollar. The stock could go to $1,000 a share. Buy now or miss out. Greed. Greed. See how close we can get. Look at this guy. Well, I think he's dead. See all the ants on him? Look at the size of that guy. Wow. Yeah, he's dead. All right.